I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my everyday life living in Leon, Nicaragua. We're going to be answering a viewer question today that came in about things to do while he and his brother are here visiting Nicaragua coming up in November. Because what is there to do in Nicaragua? A lot of cool stuff. So we're going to talk about that on today's show and some more. We'll get to all that right after the bump. All right, let's jump right into our viewer question. I'm going to read it from right over here. Thank you for this information, Scott. I think I mentioned to you on another video. My brother and I will be traveling to Nicaragua in November. We're flying into Managua, but I'm still looking into other activities for my brother and I to get into. We love interacting with the local community, which you could do anywhere. That'll be easy uh, wherever we travel. Uh, we like interacting wherever we travel. Uh, we love outdoor activities. We're considering the volcanoes, beaches, and hiking. So let's start with hiking. That's a little bit difficult to do in Nicaragua. Of course, you can go on hikes. That goes without saying. But there's a lot of places where hiking isn't as available as it might be in other places that you would potentially travel. People get used to places like the US or UK where hiking is a very normal thing and everyone does it and you just expect it to be widely available uh, from a, you know, wherever you go, there is something to uh, go hike and do kind of perspective. But if you are in Nicaragua, there's often not the open free spaces that you need to be able to go hiking. And that can be a little bit difficult uh, for someone looking for hiking locations. You're like, well, I've got this beautiful location. I see all these people. Everything's fenced off. And, and while you may have a lot of beautiful scenery, you may not have access to hiking trails. Growing up in the United States, hiking trails were everywhere. In Europe, they're everywhere, everywhere, even more than in the US. In the UK, basically the whole country is a hiking trail. So those locations have a very different vibe from hiking perspective. Of course, if you wanna hike along the road, no problem. You can go anywhere you want in Nicaragua and it's very safe. Just watch out for crazy traffic. Make sure you're walking on the correct side of the road so you see traffic coming at you because you gotta be self-preserving -preser here or you are going to get hit by something. Uh, but of course there are trails, there's places you can go. You can go hiking in Somoto Canyon, you can go hiking at some of the volcanoes. For example, the volcano just outside of Granada has some really well-known hiking trails to go up it. If you're on the island of Ometepe, they have some really famous hiking trails. Um, but a lot of the hiking is actually centered around the volcanoes, which is pretty cool if the thing you want to do is go see a volcano. But if you want some really casual hiking, it's going to get a little bit more difficult. You can certainly do it, and there's hiking all over the country, but it's it's a bit limited, and you're going to be struggling to find it. Even here in Leon, I really don't know where you can go hiking off of the roads. As long as you're on the roads, easy, but everything else, a little bit difficult. Uh, so that, that could be a challenge. But if you want to hike along beaches or volcanoes, that suddenly becomes very easy. Or if you just want to hike around the cities, there's a lot to see in there as well. So it uh, depends what you're looking for. Now, as far as volcano activities, this is Volcano Central. There's a few places where you're going to get as many volcano activities as you can do here. So certainly that could be a great one. Now, right now, I'm not doing that kind of stuff because I hurt my foot. I'm not really sure how, but I have tendonitis. And so I haven't been going out and doing the filming in a lot of the places that I would like to kind of using this as a, as a segue to get into that. Um, so hopefully in like a week, I'm going to be able to get out and do a lot more walking around like I normally do. I just, I'm trying to baby my foot to make sure I don't aggravate it. Right now it feels pretty good, but that's a, you know, knock on wood kind of scenario. We don't want to uh, jinx it by, by jumping the gun, but it's been improving. It's not a big deal. It's very mild. But if I do a bunch of walking, obviously it's going to get inflamed and then I won't be able to walk. So just uh, just taking it real easy, doing stuff from the office uh, quite a bit so that I can get out and do that stuff for you guys really soon. And just a reminder, tomorrow is Thursday. Be sure to check out the live stream in the evening. That is a lot of fun. We go for several hours. It's a great place for people to jump on and ask live questions, whether you're traveling to Nicaragua, looking to become an expat, looking to move to Nicaragua, just Latin America in general, expatting in general, or just want to hang out and chill with vloggers and our community. That'd be fantastic. Also, if you're interested in being a member or you've seen any of that stuff, we put up a video about how to join Nica Abla, which is kind of like a Telegram or WhatsApp, but it's a very private, very secure matrix-based system. Um, really designed for Nicaragua. It's completely free. Go check out that video. There'll be information on how to create your account. I mean, it's really simple, but uh, go make that account. And uh, if you're a member, there's a secret member group uh, where you can get into a chat with the other members as well. So just wanted to mention that because we brought out a lot of videos today because I'm kind of doing this rapid fire Q&A video format over the next few days just because I'm stuck here in the office. Okay, so volcanoes. So many volcanoes. You can go hiking on the on Messiah if that's open. That depends on what their status is. With the, I mean, most volcanoes have different status at different times. Uh, Ometepe has good hiking. Granada has good hiking. 
hiking here in Leon. There's uh, Cerro Negro has some hiking. So there are options. A lot of volcanoes, even up in the north, like really far in the north, there's some good hiking up there. There are some uh, parks and reserves. Those are places I'd love to get out and do a lot more filming. You can um, do a little bit in like Juan Venado, which is here in the Leon area. Uh, but you gotta take boats out there and then you're on a, a long spit of beach, uh, sandy walking for a really long way. Um, I think, honestly, if you want casual walking, walking on the roads is worth it. There's so much to see culturally and you mentioned liking to get out and like get to know the culture. I think walking through the towns, between towns, in the villages, that kind of stuff actually gives you a lot of cultural uh, view, if nothing else, even if not direct interaction, uh, compared to other things. I mean, that kind of goes without saying, but I think it's a really good way because people live outdoors and so close to the road. Like, it's not like in the United States, if you were to walk down most roads, you'd be like, yeah, that's a house way back there. Like, I could see that from a car. This is all the same. But if you're actually out and walking around in Nicaragua, I think you're a little bit more connected to the space. Um, maybe that's just my impression, but that's the way I feel about it. And I think those are good walks. And I really enjoy doing that myself, walking through the barrios. You really can just stop and talk to people. You can see people, you're waving, you can see what they're doing. Like it's kind of like you're in their space uh, in a obviously acceptable way. But uh, you know, people who are sitting out on their patios are right there. You can look them in the eye, you can make contact, you can wave, you can see what they're doing. Whereas in the United States, normally when you're walking through a neighborhood, people are behind walls, behind fences. You can't see them. You barely would know if they're even outside. In many cases, you wouldn't even know. So that feels very different. And and so for casual walking, I think that works really well. And especially if you're going through like barrios or through the city, there's a lot of opportunity to see architecture and neighborhoods and uh, street food, see restaurants that may just pique your interest if you're into that kind of stuff and you want to look for local restaurants rather than uh, the tourist places or the big restaurants, then that could be fantastic. Just go uh, into whatever place uh, you're walking past and you look in and you say, wow, this looks, you know, off the beaten path, but it looks good. Just hop in there and try it out. That can be a really valuable experience. As far as the volcanoes beyond that, uh, volcano boarding here in Leon on Cerro Negro, uh, you can go to Bigfoot Hostel and get hooked up with all the, the pricing and tours and everything for that. Very easy. Um, and uh, mostly that's what you do with volcanoes. Hike them or volcano board down them, uh, with the exception of Messiah, which you actually generally, you can hike it, but you drive to the top and see um, the open volcano there. Uh, so the other thing that they mentioned was beaches. So obviously Nicaragua is the land of beaches. You have no shortage here. So whatever it is you like to do on the beaches, you can probably find a way to do it in Nicaragua. In the south with San Juan del Sur, you have the more relaxed beaches where you have, uh, especially San Juan del Sur has a protected bay. So it's a little bit more of a resort by a little bit more, I mean, way more of a resort. Uh, and, and you can hang out in very, very calm waters. It's much more about sitting out, uh, relaxing on large bits of sand, uh, with, with very low waves and, uh, you know, having a drink, going to get some food, maybe going to a, a late night party. That stuff all happens all the time in San Juan del Sur. So that's really good for a lively, relaxed. I know that sounds weird, but that kind of chill, but because it's chill, it has a lot of activity. Uh, beach vibe, um, as you go farther out from San Juan del Sur, but still in the south, you start to get some surfing, uh, you get uh, uh, you know, smaller populations on the beaches, you get kind of remote. Uh, as you come up to the north, you get the Nicaraguan beaches, meaning the beaches where Nicaraguans have a tendency to go, so you get a totally different vibe. Uh, up past the reserve, which is in the middle of the country, the northern two-thirds of the beaches uh, are uh, generally uh, all Nicaraguans. Finding expats, of course, basically every beach is going to have some expats, but for the most part, the expats are a big minority, uh, even directly on the beach. You have Nicaraguans who are going out with their families doing Nicaraguan things. So you're going to have Nicaraguan restaurants everywhere. You're going to have uh, a lot of opportunities for getting in into the local community, getting to know people, talking to people. Um, and while being a tourist, you won't be completely rare, you won't be in a sea of tourists normally. So uh, having a kind of a nice beach activity, and of course you can go hiking on the beaches, you can go surfing on a lot of the beaches, you can go swimming on a lot of the beaches, you can go fishing on some of the beaches. Um, you can just sit out and have a drink anywhere, of course, um, but you'll have a lot of opportunity for interacting with locals. And uh, even if they don't live on the beach, often they're from not that far away. This is one of their local beaches. And so it's, uh, it's a good time to maybe interact with people who are 
having a little bit of relaxed time, you're not interrupting them. Like if you're in the cities and you want to, you know, get to know people, they're busy, they're working. So it's a little bit harder. But if you're out at the beach, chances are they're on their vacation. And if they're on a beach where there aren't a lot of tourists, you could be kind of a point of interest because there aren't that many tourists and it's a chance to talk to someone and get some outside perspective. So that could be cool. Uh, of course, uh, if you go up to the Leon beaches, my area, we have Las Benitas and Ponaloya. They are a little bit different in that they're so close to the city that we have a lot of expats and a lot of city traffic. It's just completely different vibe on the beaches. You can do hiking there, but generally less hiking. Uh, it's very much a place to go do Nicaraguan beach activities with a lot of population. Saturday nights especially, go dancing at Pelican Surf. That is that is the thing. There's only one dance club one night a week. That's the place to go. You've got a number of good restaurants, including uh, Encantiki with, with Mexican food and uh, the Simple Beach with Nicaraguan food and Desperados with steak and Draft House. Uh, should be open in November. Um, the the Puesto del Sol, best Italian in the region. So good, so good. Um, there's a number of places. Right down there, so you can, you can. There's a Polish restaurant, uh, Bertha's. Right as you come onto the beach, famous for their fish. There's a few places that are really well known for being good restaurants out there. So it's a nice place to go. Not many of the beaches have a selection. A lot of them have like a good restaurant. Not that many have very many restaurants because it's so uh, sparse. The the visiting population is very very thin in many cases. You can go quite north. Uh, along the coast. That's about halfway. You can keep going way up through the Chinandega beaches and get uh, very remote. Um, you can get up to where you get views of, of El Salvador and Honduras. Uh, and, and there's probably more hiking the farther up you go because you're getting more into reserves. You're getting a sparser population uh, and more beaches per square mile because uh, it starts to curve and, and be a little bit more craggy. Uh, so it's a very different thing up there. Um, so, but outdoor activities are honestly a little bit of a challenge in Nicaragua. It's just an area we're not very good at. Obviously, we have them, uh, but it's not like Costa Rica where it's a major focus of the country. Do we have zip lines? They exist, but they're not that common. Do we have outdoor amusement parks? Really? No. Do we have large areas where you can just go hiking everywhere? Generally, no. Um, but really great opportunities for hiking on the roads, a lot of volcano stuff, a lot of beach stuff. Um, and of course, Ometepe has beaches. And while there is only so many hiking trails on the island, again, hiking the road on a completely enclosed island is pretty interesting. There's not that much traffic. It's pretty safe. I've done quite a bit of hiking there on the roads, and I think it works really well. So that could be really beautiful. And it's an island, so it's surrounded by beaches with volcanoes in the middle. So you can do beach stuff and mountain stuff and some walking between the areas on the small roads and it all works out pretty well. So I think that Ometepe solves a lot of these things. And if you're coming for just a couple days, that's going to be tough to do. But if you're coming for any length of time, Ometepe should definitely be at, I would say, a minimum of a one night stay. But if you can do it, a two night stay would be really nice. Of course, it's going to be very chill. So if you're not looking for that, it may not be great. But if you're looking for something very relaxing, it's hard to be Ometepe because it's so isolated at night and so unique that you're on this island in the middle of the lake. And once the ferry stops running at night, everything shuts down. Sure, the, the villages have a little bit going on, but get out from the villages and it gets super sleepy uh, and really interesting and very dark and very still and very quiet. And uh, it's, a, it's a good place to go and reflect and, and just do something really unique. Um, definitely, if you have enough time, uh, Granada and, and Leon for their uh, uh, colonial architecture and some, you know, sightseeing and, and more uh, tourism infrastructure stuff. Again, you can get your hiking in by walking around the towns, but they the cities themselves, they're not they're outdoor activity kind of places like you mentioned. There is some interesting stuff to do. I'm sure there's some cool stuff to do in the mountains as far as outdoor activities. I've not spent time up there. I'm pretty sure that Selva Negra has, uh, which is just uh, on the kind of the northern side of Matagalpa on the road heading to Hinotega. Uh, that's a famous like hotel and outdoor complex. Um, and I'm pretty sure they have some some hiking that you can do up there. Uh, but I've not spent time there someplace that I need to go. Um, those are my kind of recommendations in the broad sense. Feel free to, and for everyone, get down there in those comments and ask questions of your own. Love to have you guys, you know, interacting with the show. If you can, send in a video, horizontal, 30 frames per second, and we'll uh, put you on the show and we can answer your questions that way as well. Um, but definitely 
ask your questions, ask for clarifications, more ideas, leave your thoughts on things you would like to do. What beach, volcano, and hiking and otherwise outdoor activities would you guys be interested in? I didn't really mention Somoto Canyon. There's like water rafting, so that's an outdoor activity, not like the ones you mentioned, but it could be a thing that you enjoy. That could be a lot of fun. Um, and uh, it's supposed to be, you know, it's not the Grand Canyon, but it's a pretty cool canyon uh, experience. And of course, there's always the cigar and tobacco tours, the coffee tours, the chocolate tours, all that kind of stuff. Lots of cities to go see, driving, hiking, biking, whatever it is that piques your interest. You can do a lot of it here in Nicaragua. Things are cheap and safe and easy, so it uh, can be a good, uh, good time. I hope you enjoy your trip. Let us know when you're coming, how it goes. Stop buying and uh, say hi, whatever. And uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Like and subscribe if you'd like to help support the channel. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me, helps support the channel and uh, helps pay for the cameras and software and all the things that we need to do the show. Uh, we do have a membership that I mentioned that would be great if people signed up. Not really pressuring people to do that, but we do have our super secret chat group to add people to. And uh, other than those items, I guess I will see all of you for the live stream plus a regular episode tomorrow.